we wanted to talk about the inspiration behind this project and I, I was really blessed to have Nancy approach me after one of the professional development <laughs> conferences that we do at Hartnell and she asked if I would be interested in collaborating. So there's been a couple of times in nursing that we use theater students for standardized patients, to be patients so that the students can role play, taking care of a person, um, doing an assessment, or particularly mental health. It's hard for the vocational nursing program in, in particular to get a mental health rotation. So this was part of the initial collaborative. And then Marnie started talking to me about theater of the oppressed. And, and applied theater and yeah. part of it because there's the traditional theater where we do shows and there's a tremendous value to that because it's providing educational and entertainment and cultural value but there is another track in theater which which is becoming more and more significant and more and more popular these days and it's really applied theater or theater for social change so we're using the tools of theater to, to help in all kinds of social areas and, and cut across the disciplines. So it really spoke to me. We start a vocational nursing program out with um, the Academy of College Excellence uh, created by Diego Navarro because we want to give our students a voice. A chance to find their self, find their center, uh, be able to be an advocate. That's what nurses do. and. Um, I really felt strongly that this would resonate with the vocational nursing program. And one of the things, it's, it's so great for our students, the theater students as well as the nursing students, to, to be able to have that interaction with one another. In terms of the patient simulations, our students get it on a whole nother level and they understand what it is to really get into the skin of the character that they're playing. It, it helps them to build empathy and it helps them to, to kind of deepen their awareness and understanding mm -hmm. as actors. But then taking it to the next level, we came up with a, a day long workshop where the, the theater students can teach the nursing students some theater techniques and tools and we use forum theater from Augusto Boal and Theater of the Oppressed as, as the foundational tool. So a few different tools from Boal actually because we're using image theater and talking about embodiment and talking about presence and talking about mindfulness. And we're also using forum theater where the workshop begins with each of the students being able to take a moment and reflect on mm -hmm. a situation in their own lives or in the life of a loved one where they were treated in a way that was oppressive or was painful or was potentially damaging. And they each write for about 10 minutes and then they get together in small groups and share their stories and then they act out one of those scenarios from each group. They turn it into a forum theater performance. And the way that forum theater works, of course, is that you have a joker who is leading the interaction between the audience and the performers. And the performers act out the scenario after the joker introduces the scenario and introduces the actors. Then you open it up to the forum, to discussion, and then the joker says, we're, we're going to perform it again and we invite members of the audience to come in and change the scenario and, and end the oppression or end the mistreatment or find the empowerment in this scenario. So we just finished with that workshop and it was really pretty amazing some of the scenarios people came up with and chose to act out, including one of our fellow instructors who had experience when she was a student of feeling belittled by an instructor and feeling that her family situation and her personal views were being attacked by the instructor. And it was really kind of interesting to watch her shrink in the first scene and have the students experiment with a couple different ways of confronting 
the essentially bullying behavior and totally judgmental behavior of the instructor. It's a, such a powerful thing, the coming together of the, the nursing students and, and faculty and the theater students and faculty and, and just seeing what each has to give to the other. And one of the students was talking about the, the amazing learning experience in bringing the two disciplines together and the overlaps. And, and that's one of the gifts that we really want to bring to, to inspire more collaborations like this and to inspire more schools to engage in this kind of activity. So as an instructor, you know, we're looking at measuring outcomes and, you know, one of the things I'm looking at is, are my students able to speak up and be an advocate? Because they're going to have vulnerable people who are their patients, their clients in the beds, in the clinics that need someone who's going to speak up for them when there's improper treatment. And this gives them a chance to actually experiment with finding their voice and approaching ways of speaking up. And having the theater students there intermingling, I think helps to keep it more real um, because they've been together almost a year now. Um, It also helps them to, I think, feel a little braver in trying new things. They're in a different environment with different students and I think that the theater students kind of inspire them to, to stretch. When we talk about Bloom's taxonomy, it, it's bringing us from that, that point of knowing to application, to, to being able to apply the knowledge in a real world setting. And ideally, it's, it's giving the students in both disciplines the tools to, to have the ongoing application. So it's bringing it beyond the classroom into the real world and giving them this enhanced interdisciplinary global perspective. We also brought theater students into lecture um, because we kind of study nursing with case studies uh, and it was really fun. fun. I brought a theater student to play the person in the case study, to play the person with tuberculosis and I would tap my students up like, okay, you're up, you're teaching about these medications, you're doing this and so it was making it real that it's you're not just learning it for the test. Someday you're going to have someone in front of you that you need to provide proper information to, that you need to alleviate their anxiety, that you need to deal with their concerns on how this affects their life and their families and their home. So that was, those were really valuable too. And, it, and we have long hours of lectures and vocational nursing, the Board of Vocational Nursing requires 976 hours of um, clinical and 554 hours or something like that of theory. So we have a lot of hours. And I think that this is like a valuable way of making it not just the talking head in front of the classroom, making it live. And it's that other piece too of actually the the theater students teaching the nursing students Mm -hmm. and the nursing students teaching the theater students. And there's that common saying that if you really want to learn something, <laughs> teach it. <laughs> and it's really, so it, true. this is just proof of that. We collect their reflections afterwards and it's pretty unanimous. Even my skeptical ones end up liking the experience and find that they've learned something about themselves, about being a leader, about disparity and Um, compassion and empathy and likewise for the theater students because in the arts we have to constantly kind of walk that line between having confidence and having compassion and empathy at the end of the day what we do is about connecting the arts are about connecting people and ideas and disciplines and having that at the core of what we do is just really essential. Hi, I'm Zanine Pavingwit and I'm playing Sam. My name is Raul Rondares and I'm a licensed uh, vocational nurse major. Hi, my name is Michaela David and I'm going to be portraying a depressed Daisy.
Uh, my name is Danielle Kapuyan and my major is nursing, um, licensed vocational nurse. Well, for us, it benefits us because it does help you with your in improv skills, as well as you get to take your environment and implement it also into your acting as well. For me, the most beneficial part, I think, was actually being able to step out of like the quote-unquote clinical setting. Um, I think we got the most um, benefit from actually going to the theater department um, instead of being here in our clinical you know, area. Uh, we kind of got to step back and almost relax a little bit and see really how, like I said, the way that we stand, talk, relate with one another can can be perceived. And, and so I think that part was important. So as an actor uh, with scenes that I might, um, scenes that I'm doing or plays or movies I might be in or TV shows, it really helps me understand um, the medical community, how they help with mental illness, how nurses are trained, um, and how someone with mental illness might actually feel. So we do simulation here uh, on campus. You know, we actually have a whole hospital type room where we are in clinical situations. Um, and and kind of like I was saying, I think when we're in those situations, you're kind of in nurse mode, you know, so to speak. So, you know, um, often your mind is on what your task is at hand. So you don't have the opportunity to see maybe how, as a nurse, your, your stance, your posture, your smile, your handshake can affect a client. So again, stepping out of that, and kind of for us saying this is almost a theater um, activity and not a nursing activity kind of helps you to think, oh, okay, you know, maybe if I come into a room and I do this or I do that, the client is thinking that. So uh, instead of just focusing on the nursing, this helps us to get a better all around picture of what we're doing. Because I've never done something like this before, so it's kind of helped me put a little uh, tool in my tool belt so in the future I can really take this uh, uh, example with me. In our previous modules in simulation, you have mannequins that can mimic certain medical conditions. But the mannequins are obviously, they can only do so much. So having a real person play a real clinical, you know, mental health issue, or even um, they had, you know, we had some of the actors come in and do something like tuberculosis where they're coughing and, you know, they have night sweats and things like that. So for us to be able to actually see that is important because when we go into a real life situation, a lot of times what you see or how a person is speaking or not speaking or their face is reacting is really important. So having a real life person there, I think was very beneficial. We have to make whatever we're doing believable. So even though both parties know it's an exercise, if you make your performance so much believable that, oh, they think you really do have schizophrenia or depression or whatever that you're portraying, that is what we do. That's what our jobs as actors are. Thus, whenever we're in the real world and we have to improvise something, if we make it believable, is it really improvising or am I really acting? So there, there, is, there is a difference between the two, but if you combine it together, they go in hand to hand. Sometimes it's not even, you know, noticing the big things, it's noticing the small things. Uh, I remember one situation where um, I was in clinical sim simulation with Louis, I think it was, and he was, so he was to be um, mimicking, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't remember if it was schizophrenia or if it was, well, basically what it was is it was a, a um, we, we had to medicate him because there was a, uh, a risk of, I think, magnesium overdose. So one of the uh, reactions is um, twitching and uh, shaking, shaking this movements, facial movements. So um, again, you can't realize, you can't really see those on a mannequin. So having a real life person to notice that, and they weren't over the top movements. Um, they were very slight. So in order for us to kind of, like, again, to kind of know what that looks like in real life, um, you know, it was beneficial to have an actor there to be able to portray that. One thing I would recommend is if we had been doing this from the very beginning in the program, I would recommend showing what you can do to prevent a situation from going down the cycle of waste.
where it's like, okay, I should have done this, I should have advocated this way, I should have said something this way. Um, I think that's something that we should have learned when in the way beginning rather than now because then it's like, okay, well, if I had learned that, then I would have been like, I would have advocated for my patient or I would have advocated for myself as a student. I'm, I'm glad that this opportunity happened. Um, I, I think going forward, it's, it, it would be beneficial to any incoming classes, even some of the RN classes, to get that type of um, experience. And I think, I mean, for you guys as well, you get to kind of practice your trade, you know, um, taking a role and, and going with it. And, and like I said, it's not always necessarily, you know, an over-the-top or exaggerated movement. Sometimes it's the small things as well. So I think it's, it's beneficial to both theater actors and nursing students. Um, and like I said, hopefully this is something that can continue forward. I think the next step for both of us, our, our goal would be able to have not just a one day workshop and a few patient simulations, but to actually have a class where theater students and nursing students are participating. Yes. we've. We really feel like that's the next direction. As a matter of fact, we had two other faculty who teach clinical with us today, and there, there was like, well, we need to do this all the time. We need more of this. Um, you know, I know some of the theater classes get humanities credit, um, and this would be an ideal humanities course for nursing students. And if we be. design it with reading and with study, and there's a lot of works that are, there's a lot of works that are on health and healthcare disparity. And I think it would be an invaluable course for uh, for a number of students in other disciplines too. So the idea behind the course is really performing empathy or uh, becoming change makers. So it's really about embodying and empowering that capacity to be an advocate. And so that's helpful across the disciplines, but certainly if you're in the health sciences or if you're in the arts, too. Yeah, I could see future teachers being good at this. We, people who are doing the pre-med courses being needing this. People that want to go work with young children. I mean, the more it, it is about change.